Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla from Kayla's Cricut Creations and in today's video I'm going to show you how to apply adhesive vinyl to wine glasses. This is such a great beginner project if you're new to Cricut. I found these wine glasses at the Dollar Tree so for only $1.25 each that makes this such an inexpensive project and the glasses are really good quality. They are great to make for any type of party or holiday and you can personalize them however you like. For this project, you'll need permanent vinyl. I love StarCraft vinyl. I purchased it from 143vinyl.com. I am an affiliate partner for them. They are such a great company. I will make sure to link the vinyl down in my description box. I was out of black StarCraft vinyl, so I'm using 651 vinyl. This is another great option and you can purchase it from Michaels. You'll also need transfer tape. I have searched for years for a good transfer tape. I think I've had my Cricut since 2017 and I finally found this Caesar brand and it works so well. You'll want some rubbing alcohol and some type of weeding tool as well. I always love using my pen pen tool. First, I'm going to remove the stickers on the bottom of the cups. A little hack for this, grab a heat gun. They're not too expensive, I don't think, and it makes taking the stickers off so much easier. Of course, for some reason, I was still struggling with this one. I don't typically have that problem after using my heat gun. Once I got most of it off, I took my rubbing alcohol and sprayed it, then just took my paper towel and got the rest of it off. With the other two, I tried the heat gun again and it just easily peeled off. So sometimes you get some stubborn ones. Now I'm ready to measure my cup to figure out what size I want my vinyl to be. Looking at that, about three inches is good. I decided to go just a little bit wider and do 3.25 inches for my width. For one of my cups, I'm going to be adding vinyl around the whole thing, so I'm just measuring about how wide that is on the widest part of the cup. I'm in Cricut Design Space and I am going to upload the images that I'm using for my wine glasses. I am making three different wine glasses. You can find the images from so many different places. I pay for Cricut Access, so I can grab any images from there. I also pay for a membership through Creative Fabrica, which is an amazing website. I pay for the yearly membership, so it's only $4.99 a month. So for me, that's worth it to also have that one. You can also find images on Etsy, a lot of bloggers post uh, SVG files, and a lot of times they have some free ones, or you can search the internet, so there's lots of different places. I'm going to click on images to find my first SVG. It's here for the booze, which I just think is so cute. <laughs> I'm going to grab this first one. I don't love the ghost though, so I will be switching it with a different image. For another wine glass, I am going to be looking for a ghost and a pumpkin. There's a whole bunch of cute ghosts on here. I've already played around with what I wanted to do with this, so I think I am going to type in the number for the image because it might take me a while to find it. Each image has a number, so it makes it easier to search for it. You do have to put that pound sign in front. Here's the ghost image I'm using, and now I am going to search for the pumpkin. Here's the pumpkin. You can click on it, and if you see down at the bottom right, all of these images are still selected. So you can go through and find all the images you want. Once you have all of, of those, then you can just select Add to Canvas. So both of these are going to be for one wine glass. Here's another one. For my third wine glass, I'm grabbing an image from Creative Fabrica, which is this one. I have already downloaded it. When you click the button, it will go into your downloads folder. A lot of times it has a zip file. Mine automatically unzips it on a Mac, but if you're on a window, sometimes you have to go in and unzip it. Then you can just find it in your downloads. Over in Design Space, I'll click on Upload. I'll go to Upload Image. 
I'm in my downloads folder. You can see it gives me an option for a PNG and an SVG. I want the SVG. A PNG, uh, typically you'll want that if you are doing print and cut. So I will just double click on this. I'll hit upload. Now I can add it to the canvas. I also will be uploading this image too. This is from Creative Fabrica and I liked the ghost from it. So I follow the same process for that. I'll select on both of those and hit add to canvas. It pulls these in really large, so I'm just gonna make it smaller. This will be for one wine glass. This will be for the other. I'm going to work with here for the booze first. I will click on the image. Everything you need to know about the image is in the layers panel, which really helps. Sometimes it gets a little crazy with all the other images, but as you can see, this one's highlighted and this one is grouped together right now. What I'm going to do is hit ungroup and now we have all of our different layers for the image. I don't want this ghost image, so I'm going to click on this layer and I'll just hit delete. I also don't want the pink in here, so I'll hit delete again. Now I'm going to go down to my spooky season and I am going to be adding this ghost over here. I don't typically switch around SVGs like this, but I was just struggling to find one that had everything that I wanted. Looking over here, you can see the ghost layer. I'm going to hit ungroup again. You can hide these layers instead of deleting them, but I like to delete them if I know I'm not going to use it because it just makes the layers panel look less busy. Okay, now we have our cute ghost. I'm just going to bring it in just a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is highlight over this entire thing. I am going to come down here and hit attach. That way it will show up exactly like this when you go to make it. Now I want to size it as well. I'm going to make it 3.25 inches for the width. And that one is ready. Now for witch's brew, I'm going to move a couple things around for this one as well. I'll make it bigger so it's easier to see. I'm going to hit ungroup. I want to just click on this pumpkin to delete it, but it's selecting the witches because that's in front of the pumpkin. So I am just going to find the pumpkin in the layers panel. I'll hit delete. I don't want these little stars, so I'll delete those. I am going to keep the bat. I think the bat is very cute. Also, there's this random line here, and I don't know what that's for, so I'm going to delete that. I want to move the bat around, but it's not letting me because the witches is in front. I am going to right click and hit send backward. I'm going to do that one more time. I want to bring the bat to the front. As you can see now, the bat is in front of witches. So I'll click on this and I'm just going to move it a little bit over. Okay, that looks good. Now I am going to highlight over the whole thing. Also, I like to do this instead of going and selecting each layer in the layers panel. It is just so much easier. I'll select attach. Then I will make this the same size as the other one, 3.25. Also in the layers panel, you can double click in here and title this. If you're making a whole bunch of these, it's kind of nice. So I'm going to type in witches brew. And then for this one, I'm going to type in here comes the booze or here for the booze. <laughs> now I'm ready to work on this next one. I want just one pumpkin separate from this. And if you look in the layers panel, you can see that these two pumpkin pieces are one layer. So I can't just delete it. But what I can do is click on the contour button. I'll hit contour then I can just delete one. Now I'm gonna go over to the little stems and I'll delete this bottom one also. You just select on it and there you go. I'm going to grab a font for this. This is a font that I got from Creative Fabrica. It's called JT Grove. I use it for almost everything lately, I feel like. And I'm gonna type in spooky babe in all caps. This has a lot of space in between it, so I am going to go up to my line space and bring it down. 
Now what I'm going to do next is grab a guide that is about the size of my wine glass. It's not going to be perfect because it tapers and gets smaller, but I measured around the whole area of the wine glass and I am going to make that my width. I'll go over to my shapes and grab a square. I'm going to change this to a guide. And my width was about 11.5 inches. My height was about five inches. Now we have a guide and I can kind of figure out how I want to line everything up. I'm going to right click and send this to the back. Now what I'm going to do is bring my font in the center. I might make it just a little bit smaller and I am going to highlight over my font and my guide. I'll go up to align, then I'll select center. I want this to be kind of a darker pink color. Now I'm just going to arrange my ghost and pumpkin. I'm going to make about four ghosts and four pumpkins. I'm going to hit command D on my keyboard. You can also come up here and hit this plus button and it will copy it again. I'm going to bring this down and make it the tiniest bit smaller. It's really not that noticeable. <laughs> then I'll copy over here. I'm going to bring two more on this side and I will click on flip horizontal. I'll make one more of these. And I will also flip that. Okay, I think that looks cute. Now for my pumpkin, I'm just going to make four of these as well. For the stems of my pumpkins, I am going to make them the same dark pink as my font. And for my other pumpkins, I am going to make them kind of a lighter pink. It looks somewhat similar to what it already was. I need to switch the other pumpkins to that light pink and the stems to the dark pink. The fastest way to do this is just go over to your color sink and you can just drag it over. It's so much faster than going into each individual piece. You can also take this entire thing and just drag it up. And as you can see, it switched all the pumpkins. Now for the stems, I'm going to drag it up to this dark pink. Makes it super easy. Okay, I have all of my designs ready. Also, I forgot to mention for this one, it's going to be wrapping around the wine glass. That's why it's a little bit more confusing. When you're making wine glasses, if you wanna start off with just one color and do something like this, it makes the wine glasses look very cute and it's a quick and easy project. I'm going to save this, then I'll hit make it. It will pull each color onto different mats and I will grab the corresponding vinyl color to go along with it. So I have the white, black, dark pink, and light pink. I'm going to move the ghost apart just a little bit. I want a little bit of extra space to cut between these and add my transfer tape. Typically for adhesive vinyl, I just select the vinyl setting and it works really well, but I honestly have been choosing the washi tape setting almost every time lately. It just works so, so well for intricate cuts. If you are struggling to have your Cricut cut out tiny pieces, the washi tape setting is seriously a game changer and it works even if you don't have tiny little pieces as well. As you can see, it's going to cut out the white vinyl first, so I'll be putting that on my mat first. Once it's done, it'll have a little check mark and it'll automatically go to the black mat and I will put my black vinyl on there. I place my vinyl on the mat, then I load it into the Cricut machine and the Cricut will cut out the design. Once it's done, I unload it, then remove the vinyl. The best way to do this is bend your mat instead of the vinyl sheet. Then I follow the computer screen and see which vinyl color is next and I have the Cricut cut out the rest of the colors. I like to place my whole vinyl sheet on the mat so once it's done cutting, I go in and take my scissors and cut around the design. This project is really great if you wanna use up some of your scrap vinyl. Then I go in and weed out the excess vinyl. I like using my weeding tool for the little holes in the letters and this weeding berry is really great when weeding vinyl also. 
when picking a permanent vinyl, some are a lot better than others. So honestly, I would stay away from the Cricut vinyl. I just have always struggled with it. It just, for some reason, the quality doesn't seem as great. There's some other vinyl I've bought before, like from Hobby Lobby and some on Amazon that just aren't as good. As I'm saying that, I'm struggling with this vinyl, but it got stuck when I was peeling off the transfer tape and I accidentally ripped between the H and E. That happens sometimes. It can be a little difficult sometimes when you're removing that excess vinyl. I decided to leave it just how it was because I felt like it looked fine. There is a technique you can use to help that. It's called reverse weeding. I made a video on it several years ago and I really should do an updated one. I can link it down below, but let me know if you wanna see an updated version of it. Once I'm weeding everything out, I just go in with scissors and cut around each of the designs. Before adding the vinyl, I recommend going in with rubbing alcohol and cleaning off the glass. It seems like such a simple step, but I wouldn't skip it because it really cleans off all that dust so the vinyl just adheres a lot better and lasts longer. Now I'm ready to add my vinyl. I cut off a sheet of transfer tape the same size of the vinyl sheet. I remove the backing of the transfer tape and add it to my vinyl and I like that this has lines on it. It just makes it easier to line up on my cup. I use a scraper tool to press that vinyl onto the transfer tape but the key here is to turn it around and scrape the backing. That is a game changer. <laughs> Another huge tip that I have for you is remove the backing of the vinyl instead of the actual clear transfer tape. It just really helps keep that vinyl on the transfer tape. Now I'm ready to center this on my glass. Once I have it where I want it, I press just the center part of the vinyl down. I do this because it's a round surface. To apply the rest of the vinyl, I need to take scissors and cut slits in the transfer tape. This is the biggest tip and hack that just makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> this will release that transfer tape so you have some more wiggle room to place down that vinyl. Starting with the O and the B, you can see the B wasn't perfect there, but you can go in with your thumb and usually smooth that out. Here I'm going in with the H and the E. I was struggling just a little bit with the H there. I probably could have cut a little bit more slits in it. Also, if you're really struggling, you can make the design just a little bit smaller, even like three inches. Lastly, I'm adding the ghost. You can see how that slit just gives it some extra room to be able to press it down. Once I'm done, I remove the transfer tape. I was struggling a little bit to take it off. If that happens, just press it back down and just press with your finger to try to get that vinyl to stick on the glass, then keep removing the transfer tape. This vinyl is scrap vinyl and I'm not sure how long I've had it and sometimes I think that makes a difference when it gets kind of finicky like this and I accidentally took off the F and I didn't even notice it. Once the transfer tape's off, I go in and make sure I have the vinyl totally smoothed out and that it's pressed down really well. For the witch's brew, I go in and follow the exact same process that I did for the other wine glass. Are you guys crafting for fall or Halloween yet? It's kind of early, but I am just ready for that season and I would love to hear what you guys are making. I have a video coming out hopefully next week with some projects and I can't wait to share those with you. I zoomed all of this part up on the video, but I'm basically going through each letter and getting it pressed down over that wine glass. Once that's done, I just start removing the transfer tape. Here's another bump in the vinyl. Just take your finger and smooth it out. Now I'm ready to put together my last wine glass. I'm adding the wording first, then I'll go in and add the ghost and pumpkins. My StarCraft vinyl stuck down so well to the glass, I was able to easily remove the transfer tape without it picking up at all. I think I was struggling with the Oracle 651 vinyl because I had had it for several years. It was in my scrap bucket. 
For my ghost, I need to layer the black outline on top of the white first. So I add the transfer tape to that and I have the best hack. A lot of you have probably heard this already, but you use parchment paper to line it up. I leave a little space of the transfer tape up, then with the parchment paper in between the vinyl, I'm able to set it down and make sure it's totally lined up. Once it is, I press down that sticky transfer tape at the top, then I could just remove that parchment paper and set the vinyl down. I just leave the transfer tape on for now, then I grab another sheet of transfer tape and I follow the exact same process for the other three ghosts. Now I'm ready to add them to my cup. I try to arrange them kind of like how I had it in Cricut Design Space and sometimes it can kind of help to have Cricut Design Space pulled up while you are lining everything up. One thing I did notice with this, I have those ghosts really close to the rim of the glass and you want to have enough space to make sure that your lips don't touch it when you're drinking from the cup. So next time I would have moved those down just a little bit. Next, I just place the pumpkins in between the ghosts. With the pumpkins, I use the same transfer tape for every single one. It's really nice to be able to reuse the transfer tape as much as you can. It just helps save on material and cost. For the stems, I just use the same transfer tape as well and line it up over the pumpkin. Here's how these turn out. I cannot get over how simple they are, but how adorable they turned out. I would wait 24 to 48 hours for the vinyl to cure onto the cups. You want it to cure before you get it wet. This is permanent vinyl, so you don't have to do any type of sealing at all. However, I am showing this one again because the fine line in the ghost, I have struggled with some of those picking up after a little while. So I would gently wash those or you can avoid the fine lines altogether. These are hand wash only. You don't want to put these in the dishwasher. Like I said earlier, I would not put the ghost and pumpkins up that high next time because you don't want to be touching the vinyl when you're drinking from it. Overall, I am so obsessed with these. They are so fun and inexpensive to make. I hope you enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you are new.